Other interesting business news, you have Dodge Ram 1500 killing the V8. Also known as the, one of the worst ideas, not in history, perhaps this calendar year though, certainly. Now, it's one of those instances where truck culture is a fascinating phenomenon in and of itself. Back when I was in the automotive community a year, lifetime ago actually, it seems like, it's one of those instances where you could talk to the end user or the customer about, you know, here's the greatest feature, here's the, best, here's the, you know, the extra horsepower, the extra fuel economy, the extra towing capacity. Let's be honest, no one cares about fuel economy with a truck, it's meant to tow things. But one of the biggest allures and one of the biggest driving reasons they purchased it is because their grandpa had the same brand, same model, and for most trucks, the 1500 is kind of the entry level full-size truck. That's why pretty much, they're all named kind of the same. You have the Chevy Silverado 1500, they also have the GMC Sierra, which is same thing, different badges, and different customers, incidentally enough, which is why they kept the GMC brand around at General Motors. And then you also have Ford, They some might say they got lazy, but they just had the Ford F-150 instead of having a 1500. And for the longest time, interestingly enough, they actually started off as being an economical, cheap farm vehicle. And now we have these trucks that are costing more than a house. And traditionally, the best trucks, well, I'll still contend to this day, they have a V8, also known as eight cylinders of, per, per, of uh, per, uh, perfection. Again, I'm not a doctor, but if you click subscribe, it could cure the stuttering. And believe it or not, I do actually attempt multiple takes for some of these, believe it or not. Now, it's one of those instances where with the V8, now I'd rather have an engine that's larger and works doesn't have to work as hard as opposed to having a V6, so having less cylinders, but it's having to work harder to actually achieve the same results. That's why so many people actually started to look at other vehicles when Toyota, they had their bulletproof Tundra, which was a great truck. I mean, historically speaking, great V8, a lot of towing capacity, well, a fair amount of towing capacity, let's be honest but extremely Toyota reliability. And then in recent years, they actually went to a V6, I believe it's a twin turbo, which again, smaller engine is going to have to work harder, which we'll see as the data starts to come to fruition, but I believe will not be good for them right long-term for the reliability of Toyota. Now, traditionally in terms of pickup trucks though, historically, a majority of the market is dominated by the big three. Now the big three is called the big three because they used to be the OG or the, the best as youth might say. And it was Ford, General Motors, as well as Chrysler. There was a time when they made the best vehicles on the planet. They had a majority of the market share. And famously, they're all headquartered in the Detroit area, with Ford famously being headquartered in Dearborn, Michigan, General Motors being downtown Detroit, and Chrysler somewhere, I forget. Now, interestingly enough, they specify that the Ram 1500 in 2025 will only, the only drivetrain available, two trains for the new Hurricane. Uh, I don't know what hurts more, my eyes trying to read this or my tongue trying to say it out loud, but I will power through this news of the Ram truck, pickup truck update. The options are going to be an inline six and an electrified version with a 3.6 liter Pentastar. So there's no Hemi, which is what built Chrysler Plymouth. It, it's what really built the brand of Chrysler was the good old Hemi, the hemispherical head. I mean... He was a marketing genius, and I was going to say, you could, if you're hanging out with the guys in the garage, you could debate for in eons, talking about the efficiencies of the trade-offs of how much of a difference it made. Personally, I think it was a brilliant marketing campaign, because again, Hemi, and again, there's only one brand that can use that name, it's, it's a very brilliant marketing move, and I believe also from an engineering perspective as well. Now, they say the Hemi is gone. Now, they also continue to say that the new Hurricane engines which I guess they don't get an F minus for marketing. The Hurricane does sound moderately interesting for a name of an engine. I guess I don't have too much to brag about. Honda calls their engine in my car, Earth Dreams. Again, I'm available for consulting for marketing folks. Or I should start, that should be my next startup because some of these companies do need some help. Now they noted that the standard version of the new turbocharged six cylinder puts out 420 horsepower and 469 foot pounds of torque. A high output version is capable of 540 horsepower and 521 foot-pounds of torque. For reference, the current 5.7 liter e-torque Hemi produces 395 horsepower and 410 foot-pounds of torque. The maximum towing out of the new out of the box for the new truck will be 11,580 pounds, with the maximum payload of 2,300 pounds. That will likely be the rating for the 540 horsepower trim for the 1500. The current Ram's 1500 towing max is 11,300 pounds. 
and a payload load of 1,790 pounds. They also noted that the 700 plus horsepower TRX is also dead and it will be replaced by a very similar truck called the Ram 1500 RO, R-H-O, which stands for Ram High Output. It's effectively a TRX minus the V8 with big tires, long sus travel suspension, widening fenders, and they also say the chance of the TRX's eventual return is also unknown. Now they know that the Stellantis V8 isn't completely dead. Although it's not likely to be offered in the new Charger or the full-size Ram, the engine engines like the 3.4 liter V8 are still safe and sound in the Ram 2500. And they're also speculating that other brands, similarly General Motors, may start to have a lower or a smaller engine for the 1500 series. For now, the V8 half ton is still around in the form of the F-150 as well as the Chevy Phil uh, Silverado 1500. And of course, the GMC Sierra, which is the same thing as Chevy Silverado, same, same factory, different badges, a debate for another time perhaps. So it'll be interesting to see, again, the engines are going to have to work harder. And don't get me wrong, they're, we just talked about statistically speaking, the output numbers in most of the respects are better, they're greater. Now my concern, granted, I'm someone who buys, well, I say buys, I don't buy a lot of cars. I try to buy one car and drive it darn near forever, get a good ROI, which is why I have a Honda Civic SI with a stick shift, as all vehicles should have a stick shift by default. My concern is I'd really have a truck with a bigger engine that doesn't have to work as hard to do the same thing. And also with the hybrid, again, personally, I would never want a hybrid for a truck, especially because, again, cars on average are less reliable than they used to be, partially because we've put so much technology into them. There's so much more failure points. But I want something that'll last you know, a couple million miles, preferably, probably, I think Dodge was the last company to offer a full-size pickup with a stick shift. So good old Dodge with a diesel engine and a stick shift. It's hard to beat, but again, they don't make it anymore, so they have to go use. It's another debate for another time, but for all the petrol heads and all the truck owners who really prefer a good old V8, the brand will help out a lot in terms of you will probably lose a fair amount of the customers to other brands, you know, GM and Ford, because they want that bigger engine. But because people are so brand loyal, especially in trucks, to the actual brand that they've known throughout the years, I suspect this will actually just increase the sales of the more pro the bigger engines and probably the more profitable Dodge Ram 2500, which they said will have a V8. So this could be yet another reason or yet another way that we're seeing a lot of these automotive companies get rid of the entry level vehicles or in some ways make them so deplorably unbearable, no one would actually want them. So they naturally go up to the higher level trim level, higher level vehicle. So there could be a reverse form of anchoring, as sales reps might say. Let me know what type of effects you think this will have on industry. I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you, everyone, again, for taking time to tune in today, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of November. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a comment is a great way to give feedback so I can know how to improve the channel and make the show better and better so that everyone can have fun. Also, and lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.